Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Nehmiduhu ve neşkuruhu ala hidayeti. Ve nusalli ve nusallim ala seyyidina ve nebiyyina Muhammed ve ala alihi tahirin ve sahbihi al-muntecebin. Allahümme sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. Cinfarıcağım. Last week we recorded a session on the intro to the Quran, uh, Tafsir Quran, in which a number of uh, themes were presented that we need to be aware of and a couple of books we mentioned as well. T today, before we start with the Surah An-Nas, which is the first Surah that we're going to address, inshallah, one thing which I want to uh, talk about I believe it's uh, critical. Quran talks to its readership and appeals to two concepts, their intellect and their heart. Their intellect, aql in Arabic, which is translated as uh, reasons, rationale, and qalb or fuad, which is their heart, souls, or essence of humanity. Both of these sources, if they are used properly from a Quranic point of view, could be uh, the base for epistemology to gain knowledge, as well as, as creating a worldview or what we call ontology. The human intellect Quran appeals to over 72 or 73 passages in the Holy Quran that appeals to constantly people using their aql, afala tatafakkarun, afala taqilun, etc., etc. In the sharra dawab عند الله الصم البوك الذين لا يعقلون the worst of uh, here dawab uh, is a metaphor for animals, but in this context is context of human being, that if you don't use the power of intellect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to you, then this is worse than the other animals. And you become dumb, uh, blind, and so on, because the power of intellect is removed. There is a unique feature in the Islamic literature Although both of these are uh, identified as a source of epistemology and gaining knowledge, Quran also talks about, and ahadith as well, talks about, they talk about what undermines the power of aql and what undermines the power of the heart, the spirit, the soul. From the literatures that we have, the most powerful knowledge that we can get is through the heart. The knowledge gained by uh, reflection of Allah giving it to pure heart, the receptive heart. But uh, intellectual rational knowledge or called philosophical knowledge is also considered to be valid if it's done properly. This unique feature is that although Quran appeals to aql, and as a, uh, reason, as a uh, strategy for reasoning and rationale, it also lists problems that could undermine aql and lead to incorrect way of thinking. Number one on the list of Quran is dhan. That Quran says these people, instead of uh, following certainty and yaqeen, they follow uh, presumptions, conjecture, and speculation. In yattabi'una illa dhan. They are not thinking properly. What they are following is only speculation. Or in another uh, verse in the Holy Quran, wala taqfu ma laysa laka bihi ilm. Don't follow something that you don't, uh, you are not sure of. So following what we have yaqeen is number, is necessary. Uh, in uh, going along the path of uh, establishing truth and staying away from all speculations 
uh, or uh, conjuncture and so on is one uh, slippery slope that we might end up uh, in not being able to establish truth. Number two, taqlid, which is blind following of the past or something that other people have done. From an Islamic point of view, an ancient practice or something old, practices that are old, qua old, because they are old, it's not the source of either acceptance or rejection. We really need to use our intellect to establish uh, whether something is valid or not valid. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعْ مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا When they are told that follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, they say, no, we follow what the path that our parents, our ancestors have followed. This blind following. And then Quran responds, أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاءَهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَهْتَدُونَ they never, the, the previous generation, the ancient practice was not centered on rational or at least intellectual basis. It was just following of the previous generation before them and following, etc., etc. This blind following uh, is critical to be rejected. Uh, we have it now in these days in our families that we simply follow the path that the parents have chosen without using the intellect to establish whether this, uh, the, this path that uh, uh, the, the parents carve for us as a way to navigate through life, whether it can be supported by human intellect or at least by rational argument and intellect. Um, I must point here, there is a difference between blind following that Quran rejects uh, that says, and the concept of taqlid that we have in our faith in the absence of the Imam during the long occultation, that uh, we follow the grand scholar because the, the process of the following is to establish certainty or get close to certainty in following an expert in the field rather than a simply blind following that because they are ancestors and so on we follow. And that's num number two. Number three is to follow ego. This is one of the critical issues. Human intellect uh, or human reason, uh, the mind can be eclipsed by human ego. Ego, once it dominates, nafs al-ammara takes over or ego takes over, Correct rationalization is not possible. When you choose a particular way of life, a lifestyle, and then you navigate your search for uh, any rationalization, any kind of things that supports that uh, way of thinking or that uh, uh, particular lifestyle, this would certainly lead you away from establishing truth. So these are, uh, when we say uh, that uh, in anfus. So now you have double uh, crisis. On the one hand, you follow a speculation as well as what the nafs wishes. This is one of the challenges these days that we all uh, try to uh, establish a lifestyle and then go and find out for any excuse that would support that particular lifestyle or any rationalization that would support lifestyle. So, aql by itself, human intellect, is valid as a way to, uh, to establish truth if we make it clear right from the beginning uh, that uh, we follow uh, the, the right path and we don't do anything unless we are certain of it. We follow the certain uh, path or cert certainty and uh, we don't follow a speculation or anything else. The second source of uh, knowledge or at least uh, strategy for uh, uh, establishing the truth is what Quran considers to be the heart or the soul and uh, sometimes we have the word fuad being used in the, the text of the Quran and sometimes the word qalb. 
ان في ذلك لذكرى لمن كان له قلب قران is going to be a reminder for those who have receptive heart and uh, ascension of the heart as we elevate the heart that comes through taskia leads to removal of the uh, the veils and this veil ultimately removal of the veil ultimately creates its own unique uh, epistemology and ontology or world view that exists uh, the discussion we had earlier regarding irfan and so on comes within this particular field that quran considers uh, the uh, purification of the heart as a, as a second source for establishing knowledge and truth in addition uh, to the human intellect. If you go back to uh, the mystical orafa and so on saying that the intellectual approach by itself is not adequate or it's not fully unless they are supported by a degree of the the second source, which is the heart. Most of the orafa, such as Mullah Sadra, Marhum Imam, and others, that they went through the intellectual approach first. They found uh, Ayatollah Qadi, for example, uh, in, in Najaf, and a number of others, Mar Marhum Behjat, Hassan Zade Amri, this is within the Iranian context. Uh, these are people that said, that after finishing or at least getting to a higher level of within the intellectual field, they wanted to, to supplement that intellectual field with the spiritual dimension and say that uh, without that spiritual dimension, this intellectual field will be, has a degree uh, and some component of it is missing. In the same manner that uh, Quran considers there are certain things, certain factors that undermine the, the intellectual or rational process for deduction of the truth. By the way, this idea of how do we think properly and that would lead to a correct analysis or correct deduction is something that uh, even the Greeks were talking about it. The Aristotelian logic that, the, the, that uh, Aristotle formulated uh, regarding how to present uh, your argument. Uh, it, this is something which resulted from that concern that how do we talk, how do we present our argument in the, uh, so that this uh, uh, argument leads to truth. Quran, and the same manner that Quran says you can, there are certain factors that undermine such a process of uh, following then speculation, and uh, blind uh, following taqlid, and third, allowing the ego to dictate, when it comes to qalb and fu'ad and the inner source, there are, or at least there is one critical factor that undermines the, 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 the heart's uh, use, being used as a strategy for deduction and establishing truth, and that is sin. Uh, Quran, I mean, Hadith and Quran, they reflect uh, on this idea that the heart of human being in the original pristine uh, condition is shining and reflecting the divine reflection. Every sin, and we have similar argument in Nahjul Balagha, every sin leaves, metaphorically speaking, uh, scratches that shining mirror. Once you persist in sinning, the scratch becomes so uh, far that the, the shining mirror becomes opaque and non-reflective of any, any, any light. And then Quran has a unique uh, metaphor for it. استحوذ عليهم الشيطان فأنساهم ذكر الله when shaitan takes over completely, under what circumstance shaitan takes over, is when the heart is completely scratched. On the one hand, it tells us about the consequence of uh, sins, the veils and veils, scratches of this shining surface. On the other hand, the power of taskia, qad aflaha man zakkaha, those who 
purify it uh, through a very strenuous struggle to uh, really establish and purify the heart and empty the heart from all kinds of attachment. Sinfulness for the heart is disastrous and uh, uh, they, they consider it to be the uh, darkness of the heart. The heart becomes dark, uh, dark and uh, there are metaphors in the Holy Quran that heart becomes solid, uh, solidifies, that does not reflect does uh, no emotion whatsoever, does, doesn't even think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So reality changes. When we have a hadith from the Holy Prophet that talks about uh, on the, around the end of time, uh, people ya'muruna bil munkar wa al ma'roof, reality changes under what circumstance this happens, is when the power of discernment of what is truth and what is false is taken away from us. So there is an interesting story uh, from the Holy Prophet Wasallam. Somebody came to the mosque and went to the Holy Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, I have a question. And the Holy Prophet said, you want the answer? He said, yes. Uh, he said, you came here to ask me a question for how, what is the best way to establish truth from falsehood? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He pointed to his heart and he said, ask your heart. Don't follow fatawa of others, opinion of others you shouldn't follow. When the heart is pure by itself is the most powerful source of telling us, that's the fitra, the, the, the uh, pure uh, human disposition that would tell us what is right and what is wrong. Unfortunately, through sinfulness, veil takes over and we will be able, we will be pressed to be able to discern what is right, what is wrong. Haq can be recognized in itself, con uh, independent of what other people do. There's a story, I might have mentioned it before, Amir al muminin in the battle of uh, Khawarij, battle of Nahrawan, uh, sends Ibn Abbas, his cousin, to go and talk to the Khawarij to, to see whether they can be saved from this battle. He went there and uh, within half an hour he came back sh kind of shaking. He said, what's the matter with you, Ibn Abbas? He said, I just came from a group of people that pray late night prayer has uh, created a large dead skin on the fo forehead and the tears of late night has created a channel on, on their cheek. I find it very difficult uh, to tell these people to be kuffar and out outlaws. You see, when the mind is not properly structured. Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa responded, Ya ibn Abbas, I'raf al-haq ta'raf ahla. First recognize what is right, what is wrong, then see who is following right and wrong. You can't uh, discern or deduce haq and batil from the behavior of the, uh, of the individuals. That's why he says, even if the entire world they get against me and I have already established what is truth, I'll follow the truth rather than uh, the following the path that numbers don't matter. What Ibn Abbas could not discern, despite his closeness, despite being Sahaba, despite being present uh, in Ghadir al khum despite being all the hadith that the Holy Prophet talking about, Aliyun ma al haq wal haqq ma Ali. La yaftariqan. So Ali stands here with Ali is truth. Anybody who stands, no matter who, is against the truth. He did, somehow he missed it. Tried to discern truth and falsehood by the, the appearance of dead skin in the forehead or the tears on the, uh, uh, on the skin. That's not the way. Remove your heart from all the sinfulness and the deception that it creates. Shaitan unfortunately attacks from all corners. And we all have shortcomings that we have to be mindful and that shaitan would not uh, use these shortcoming weak points and so on to uh, somehow get into it and distract us and, and misguide us from the right path. Surah Al-Nas and Surah Al-Falaq, 
is this is a good segue uh, to move into Surah An-Nas and Surah Al-Falaq because both of them are, are have similar kind of central theme and that is appealing or taking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from either evil or from shaitan himself. In Surah An-Nas, uh, the focus was, is on shaitan and the strategy that shaitan uses in creating doubt in our mind. Why do we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I was telling Brother Ali this morning uh, that uh, uh, Ayatollah Bajat said that in confrontation with shaitan, there is no use of standing in front of shaitan and trying to fight. The best thing is to run away. And the only way we can run away to take refuge and ask uh, Allah to, uh, to protect. Human intellect, when it comes to, when it's dominated by ego and so on, is not capable of protecting us from shaitan. Quran, the best metaphor or example that we can use is the story of Yusuf and Zulaikha. The most powerful woman in Egypt, the most beautiful woman in Egypt, falls in love with this young, uh, handsome man and prepares the ground and says, Qalat haytalak, I'm ready for you. What is the answer that Yusuf gives? It doesn't, he doesn't say, well, I am the grandson of the Holy Prophet. I am Prophet in myself. My grandfather was Prophet Ibrahim, or great-grandfather was Prophet Ibrahim, etc., etc. Uh, and I appeal to the sense of family to protect me. No. Qala ma'adhallah. Taking refuge in Allah to protect. There are certain temptations in life that we, if we can really stand and say ma'adhallah, then it, it, this, this is the, the, the whole the essence. So what we have here is that uh, in Qul'a A'udhu Barabbin Nas, taking refuge in Allah to protect us from waswasat shaitan This is specifically the waswasat shaitan Although uh, both, as I said, uh, both four of the qalaqals, which is Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, Qul A'udhu Barabbil Falaq, Qul A'udhu Barabbil Nas, Qul A'udhu Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun, uh, we have recommendations to be recited uh, constantly and morning and evening to be protected. But uh, Surah An-Nas specifically uh, uh, focuses on shaitan and the strategy that shaitan uses to uh, derail us from the right path. And uh, that's it, that is the waswasa. I, I seek refuge. Now three of God's character, both, by, the, by the way, for the Persian speakers, I brought the book Tafsir uh, Nemune. This is the last volume uh, of the old print, 27 or 28 volumes. This is the last volume. The, la the 28 volume is uh, uh, literally uh, the, c the content divided into different themes and so on and how to find out various ayahs and, and uh, surahs. Uh, there is a hadith uh, narrated in this book, Tafsir uh, Namuna, that we all are susceptible to our heart are susceptible to two things. مَا مِنْ مُؤْمِنٍ إِلَّا وَلِقَلْبِهِ فِي صَدْرِهِ أَذْنَانٍ Every believer, his heart, their heart, they have two ears, or could be influenced, a metaphorical use of ears, could be influenced by two things. أُذْنٌ يَنْفُثُ فِيهِ الْمَلَكِ وَأُذْنٌ يَنْفُثُ فِيهِ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ There is uh, uh, an ear or if we uh, dispense with the idea of ear and look at the context itself, you could be influenced by the malak, or you could be influenced by shaitan. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another, this is one of the things that we talked about uh, last week, tafsir al-Qur'an bil-Qur'an, that uh, when we try to in, uh, establish or tafsir or do a commentary, we present the idea uh, uh, to the Quran and Quran tells us we know that Quran says 
in ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan the true abd and servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaitan has no authority over them so for us for our heart to become the influence of malaika only means we have to become a true abd and servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that shaitan doesn't come close otherwise uh, فَيُؤَيِّدُ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِالْمَلَكِ فَهُوَ قَوْلُهُ سُبْحَانَ وَأَيَّدَهُمْ بِالْرُوحٌ مِنْ So if you purify your, your heart, you become, you influenced by the malaika uh, all the time. This is another issue which again here, من الجنة والناس that verse talks about. We have talked about in the many uh, years ago and I believe the story of Adam that uh, the, the story of Genesis and creation and during the days that at uh, the center Sunday morning program there is a misconception that they say be between people that God has created uh, humans and humans can have three different levels those who follow nafs al-ammara those who follow nafs al uh, and those who follow nafs al I have no problem with this. I, this is clearly comes out of the verse. But then they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also have, has created malaika as a unique independent entity and then created jinn. That shaitan falls within this category. I believe from uh, the various verses and ahadith that we have, Allah has created two types. Of creatures the visible and the invisible the visible are the human being the non-visible are the jinn the jinn can be divided into in the same parallel to human being that they follow nafs al-ammara nafs al and nafs al mutmainna the jinn could be divided into the three categories those who have struggled during their life and attained a degree of perfection then they are called malak. Those who have sunk low, remember shaitan, according to our hadith, met metaphorical use of number six, uh, prayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 6,000 years. And on one example, one instance, fell. Not only fell, he wasn't humble enough to stand as Adam was, to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, O oh Lord, forgive challenge the power of God now that you have tested me and I have lost I'll prove it to you that this cram de la cram of your creation they will fall for my tricks and I will misguide them I said okay go ahead in this context Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. I'm giving you a warning those who purely dedicate their heart to me you have no authority over so shaitan becomes asfal as safilin that we have compared to human being. And the middle category are the jinns. So technically the jinn and the nas, the seen and the unseen. And each of these, depending on the struggle that they go through, uh, in Surah An-Nuh or uh, some other uh, Surah Al-Jinn or some others that we say that Istama'a uh, nafarun min al-Jinn that they came to uh, listen to the, to the Wahi and so on and they say that there are those within us that they have fallen and there are those who have elevated themselves. So the elevated, it's a metaphor, metaphoric use of language, we call them Malaika. Otherwise Malaika can fall, can make a mistake. In the story of uh, the birth of Imam Hussein Sallallahu we have a story, uh, Futrus, the Malaika, uh, one of the, uh, the Malaks, that his wings wa was clipped by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and asked Jibreel as he's going to go and uh, give the glad tiding to the Holy Prophet to ask the Holy Prophet Bihaq uh, al-Hussein to pray for him so that Allah would give him the power back. Clipping of the wing is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have done something wrong. And few other examples. So here uh, in this uh, uh, sur Surah Al-Nas, both Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas, they both appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
in the first one, Surah Al-Falaq, in all, to be protected from all evils. Qul a'udhu bi rabbi al-falaq, min sharr ma khalaq, sharr, shurur and evil. And uh, but Surah An-Nas specifically talks and particularly uh, jealousy it was in Surah Al-Falaq and here specifically about waswasa, one of the major uh, strategy that shaitan uses to deviate us from the right path. And then it uses three concepts of Ilah, uh, Ma Malak Ilah and Rabb. Uh, the, to just uh, concept of uh, Rabban Nas, the Lordship, Malak Nas, the one who owns, and Ilah Nas, the overall God. So, Lordship, Godship, and ownership that deserves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be protected from Min Sharr al Waswas al Khannas. This is a specific. Because uh, shaitan comes through waswas. So there is a hadith that say, when the verse uh, from uh, came, uh, let me if I can find uh, the, the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up an avenue, a strategy for uh, repentance. They say that shaitan went, as soon as the verse was revealed, shaitan went to the top of the mountain and screamed for his uh, family to, to gather and his troops to gather together. So everybody gathered, they said, what's the matter, why is this so, uh, uh, the, the, as we say, uh, the, the whole uh, call, he said there was a, a, a verse just re re uh, revealed uh, to uh, uh, Muhammad and it, it has created a huge amount of concern for me. I want to find out what can we as shayateen do to prevent people from staghfarullah lidhunubihim, from tawbah. And every shaytan, every leader uh, of the shaytan came up with one strategy of the other. Khannas, which is one of the characteristics of these shayateen, that comes forward, and technically in Arabic lang language, Khannas means somebody who comes and immediately withdraws. Close, gets close, and then withdraws. Says, pitch, 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 waswasa means, uh, says something in your ears, a uh, whisper, and then withdraws. And when, by doing this, we uh, stay away from istighfar, Toba, repentance, and everything else. So, uh, this uh, Khannas came forward and he said, I, I, I think I, Shaitan did not agree with any of those strategies provided. Khannas said, I have the answer. And I have this waswasa. I will go to their heart or they're close to their ears. Remember the hadith that says you have two ears. And I start waswasa. Uh, whisper that why do you have to, uh, uh, to make Toba now? You have 50 years to go. You can always repent later. Why do you have to follow uh, and do your uh, Salat and so on? You can do it uh, later. Why do you have to fast? You can do it later, etc., etc. Uh, somebody after the month of Ramadan sent me an email and he said, Mulana, I have a question. I know it's a little bit embarrassing. I haven't fasted for the past 30 years. And, uh, and uh, this fast was deliberately broken. What is my kafara and my qada and so on? I calculated if he has this life plus another life added together to just do the uh, qada is not going to make it. If he feeds the entire Palestinian nation, still not make it. So uh, this idea of 30 years delay, deliberate violation of the law is what happens from Waswasa. You are beautiful, why do you have to wear hijab? Wait until you get 60 years old and then you start wearing hijab. How many times have I heard this one before? Mulana, I'm too young. Or Waswasa, I am a nurse. It, uh, and hijab is going to cause, it's a straight jacket, it's going to create a huge amount of discomfort in my life. 
or some other uh, uh, examples. Highly recommended recitation of the Qalaqils in the morning with uh, Ayatul Kursi to protect yourself from uh, all the uh, evils uh, that might happen during the day. From hasad and, and jealousy and envy. Particularly from waswasa and whisper. Because in fighting shaitan that knows uh, our shortcomings, uh, the story of Genesis, uh, once they ate the, 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 from the tree, the technical word is that that, that private part became uh, un, uh, uh, known. I would, there are others that would in, interpret it differently. Shaitan found out your shortcomings. It's nothing to do, the issue of uh, genitalia and others is just one shortcoming. Shaitan finds out all shortcomings. Because shaitan knows of all short, uh, shortcomings, then the only source of strength that we have with regard to surat, uh, the way Surah An-Nas is teaching us to take refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Let me stop here and then uh, if there are any other questions that we can deal with.